Hello. Hello YouTube. So today we're going to be talking about how to get yourself an imported car from Japan and all the stuff you'll need to do to get it registered and basically get yourself in a Asian car. So roll the intro. <laughs> Okay, so step one on my bit of paper is what car do you want? Now, when I was looking for my car, I knew exactly what I wanted. I knew I wanted a Skyline, so it was nice and quick and easy, but there's so much out there to offer, like stuff you completely forget about. You look at it and you think, oh, I'd like that. So you have got to be pretty certain when you go to like, get it, basically. Next step contact a company called Servtech what they will do is they will go and view the car for you send you all the details and basically give you the option whether you want to go through like a dealership car or if you actually want to go through the auctions which I highly recommend because you can save yourself a ton of money sorry for swearing they'll give you all the details they'll send you photos videos I think in total they sent me 68 photos and videos combined of the car so I knew exactly what I was getting into basically uh, well more or less um, and then what you'll have to do is if you want to proceed with uh, actually going and buying the car you'll then have to send them a deposit obviously so you know they know you're not messing them around and then they will go through the auction process for you now auctions in Japan are slightly different to the ones here in the UK because over auctions over here last a little while you know a couple of minutes probably um, but in Japan I think it's literally either 30 seconds or a minute you know it's nothing you have to be on the ball and so quick and that's why you can get yourself a really good deal simply because people just like run out of time so you've won your car and now it's time to pay for it basically what they will do is they'll send you an invoice for their services which is really cheap they really don't charge very much and of course the price of the car in yen and um, then what is best to do is obviously calculate it into pounds or you know yeah it'd be pounds because we're in England <laughs> And then you can either PayPal it over to them, which I wouldn't recommend because they take quite a higher fee. But if you do international bank transfer, it sometimes works out a bit cheaper. And then what they will do, they will get the car prepped for shipping and get it all ready, contact the shipping agency, um, and just keep you updated, really. If you've got any questions, feel free to just fire at them. I was so nervous with mine, and I, I was literally pestering the guy all the time. And I'm really sorry, because I know you'd be watching this. Um, but it really, really helpful, honestly. For the first time doing it, I'd do it again. I'm gonna go through them for the foreseeable future. I'll get my next car soon, and I'm definitely going back for Reserve Tech. Next thing, your boat's in tran. Your boat? You just bought a boat. Well done. Step three, your car is now in transit and it's floating across the Adriatic Highway all the way to the UK. You need to liaise with the shipping company and basically give them. Oh wait, no, no. So once your car is actually in transit, what Reserve Tech will then do is they'll send you a little package. Um, with your export certificate, invoices for the car, they'll, they'll email you the invoices for the car as well. Um, and of course, like stuff like bill of lading, so you'll have that already. But they'll, they'll send you any history that comes with the car and, oh, not the key, they won't, they won't send you the key. And they'll also send you a little good luck charm that I've still got in my car because it's really cute, um, along with my air freshener, it's really nice. Step three, the shipping agency, the shipping agency here in the UK um, basically you will need to contact them because obviously they'll know your cars here they're not dumb if you go through Southampton docks the company I spoke to were the Corey brother agency shipping agency they were really really good lady Wendy I spoke to was really helpful um, and what they'll ask for is basically your export certificate which is like a little blue uh, slip that Reserve Tech will have sent it to you um, obviously invoice for the car and shipping so they know how, to, how much to charge you uh, duty, tax, all that kind of stuff, and they want your bill of lading, uh, just as proof, so that they know you're the one that's bought the car, and you know it's legit. Step three B, um, pay. So you will then have to pay all the tax and duty, and of course, well, just the tax and duty. Now, if you're like me and you've ordered a car that's 30 years or older, um, you will only actually have to pay five percent tax on your shipping uh, tax and VAT. 
But if it's just, you know, a regular car, say like you bought an S15 uh, that's still pretty young, you'll have to pay them a 20% tax fee, um, which, you know, no one really wants to do. So maybe try and be smart about it. Step 3C, which is what uh, the shipping agency company will uh, deal with, is they will then contact with a, a place called Nova. And what they basically do is they like the HMRC of it all. Um, they, they go through all the details and stuff. And they'll send you the paperwork so that you know your car is ready to be uh, released and basically say give you the go-ahead um, that can take a little while though so try and get it done as quick as possible the day has arrived you are on your way to the docks uh, to pick up your new drift missile show car daily whatever you're using it for um, you will need to surrender the original or one of your original bill of ladings to the offices so that they've got it for record and then they can call the people literally just up the road and be like look he's here you know uh, he's going to come get the car now that's really easy to do they literally come down you just give it straight to them they're like oh, okay cheers off you go next you'll have to go get your new car now you cannot drive the car out of the docks obviously because it's not registered there's no tax and there's no MOT um, so you'll need to have some sort of mode of transport whether it's a transporter truck or you've got a trailer on the back of something you will need that and you know you need to make sure either the car starts or you've got a winch so you can get on the back of the truck. Because believe me, you do not want to get stuck at the docks. Because if it's left there, they will charge you some hefty fines. If it's over, of course, like a certain period of time. Um, so make sure when you go and get it, you're prepared. Okay. What I did when I went there, I took all my paperwork. I rented a transporter truck from Abacus Van Hire uh, that had a winch on it. And I just made sure that everything that I could have screwed up on... I couldn't because it was all in my little magic box of paperwork. Step six, you've just dropped your car off home. You've sent back the rent a van or you rent a trailer or whatever trailer you've got. Now it's time to get down to the stuff where you start to MOT it. Now, best piece of advice I could give you is make sure you've got your car booked in somewhere um, for its MOT as soon as possible because this will speed up the process massively. Now what they can't do is obviously get, get a registration so they will have to do it off the chassis number. Of course, to help the garage that are actually doing it, uh, what I did is I got a piece of paper and I basically wrote every single detail of the car that was down. So it was like five seats, color was black, engine size, chassis number, doors, year of make, model, all this kind of stuff. And that just meant they could upload it onto the computer really quickly. Car passed its MOT, thankfully. That then gave me proof of, you know, the car is roadworthy here in the UK. Um, and because my car was older, was, oh, uh, 10 years or older, this is another thing, sorry. If your car is 10 years or older, um, you do not need inspection. So if you go on a government website, it will say, I'll oh, get the inspection. But if you look, it says if your car is 10 years or older, you do not need uh, more inspections of the car. You can just take it straight from MOT. But if it's, you know, the new Supra or something like that, you're going to need to take it from inspection, unfortunately. Next is you want to get some chassis insurance because you're going to need that for tax as well. There's loads of companies that will do it and they do it pretty cheap. I'll put a link to the company I use because they do a flat rate no matter what you could import a Bugatti Veyron and they'll charge you, I think it was like 150 quid. Yeah, whatever it was. It was it was really cheap compared to other companies they were charging like 400 pounds. It's ridiculous. So I've put a link below to the company that I use that were really, really good. Next, tax. So what you're going to want to do is fill out form V55-5. I'll actually mark out the boxes that you need to fill out because you don't need to fill out all of them um, but if you get a chance screenshot it and that should help and obviously fill it in with the details of your vehicle however if you are brave enough and you don't want to screenshot anything there is a leaflet online that's v355-5 and that will walk you through the process of filling out this form um, it's pretty straightforward uh, you've just got to be confident because obviously if you cock up the details then they're not going to be happy and then I'm going to send it back to you and it's a pain in the ass <laughs> another thing you're gonna to have to include is the 55 pound registration fee okay and you're gonna to have to calculate how much tax you're willing to pay so I did six months of tax on mine because I knew I was gonna import it and sell it soon so I thought there's no point getting a year so I calculated I think it was hundred and sixty three pound for six months for my skyline and um, plus the 55 pound on top you have to send them a check. Don't do it like, there's another way you can do it. Don't even faff around. Just send them a check. Get your dad's, I got my dad's checkbook, sent it through that and I gave him the money, just easier. 
Um, it's really stupid. You know, DVLA, you need to sort your shit up because no one has checks anymore. I don't actually have a checkbook. Then, after about, it took me six weeks to get my V5. And oh my God, is it the most stressful six weeks because there's no contact. The only thing that, <laughs> that you can look at to roughly keep an eye on how it's doing is if you go onto the DVLA website, there's a little section where um, you can track the progress and what dates they're uh, processing stuff for. And I swear to God, they, they update it once every week and you're like praying that the date that you roughly sent the letter on comes up because at least then you know, it's like, okay, we're getting there. But I was literally so anxious. I was like, oh God, have I got everything right? I hope I've got everything right. And then when I got home from work one day, it was sitting there, the letter, the nice brown envelope, I was just like, yeah! And it had my V5 inside and I was so happy. Then all you've got to do is get those plates. You go online, just type in you know, make some plates up or something. I'll, I'll put another link to the website, but again, it's really easy to do. Get the plates made with obviously your registration plate. What the company will often ask you to do, if it's going on an actual car, they'll ask you for proof of V5. So you'll have to send them and be like, look, it's going on a car, this is legit. Um, and then, then you're driving. As soon as those plates come through, stick them on your car and take it out for a drive. Obviously, you know, do routine checks of the car first, like way before you, you take it out, simply because, you know, you. You, you, it's the safest thing to do but yeah now you've got your car you can go enjoy it the wait is over all in all the process for me buying my car and getting it here took about two months which wasn't too bad considering we're still pretty high in covid um and you know but i, I completely understand if you feel the same if it's your first time doing it you are going to maybe get a little bit nervous simply because it's such a big thing and obviously you've sent them how many thousands of pounds but do not worry it is all legit they're a really good company um and then at the end of it you get a really cool car to drive at off quite often a cheaper price which is the best thing i think but yeah if you have any more questions please do feel free to leave in the comment section below i'm happy to answer them even if i don't know them i can find out for you so yeah please do feel free to comment any questions Please leave a like and subscribe um, if you want to see me do more informative videos you know I'm happy to do some if you have any video ideas please do leave them below and yeah thank you for watching we'll see you in the next one